Welcome to a new vault log. In this video I'm going to show you three methods to solder SMD parts but uh, before we get to the actual methods I think it's best to talk about the type of solder to be used. And there are two main types of solder that you can use that is leaded or lead free solder and if you are doing a prototype work it's best to stick with the leaded solder or solder paste because it's easier to get right. It has a lower melting temperature and if you are doing the production work and you plan to sell those boards then you might be forced to use a lead free solder to be complied with the regulation. So I will be using a leaded solder and a leaded solder paste in this video because I'm only doing a prototype work and uh, this works best for that. Now let's talk about the uh, methods I use for soldering SMD parts. I use uh, three different methods, each has advantages and disadvantages. The sponsor of this video is JLCPCB.com, a professional manufacturer of printed circuit boards. Their offer is pretty much the best, you can order 10 PCBs for just $2. When ordering the PCBs, you can also add a steel stencil, as I will be using later in this video. So I encourage you to check out their website, which will be linked in the description below. Method number one is soldering directly to the PCB with a soldering iron. This is the method I use when I assemble one or two pieces and I don't really care about how it's going to look. I usually start with some flux. Then I hold the component with my tweezers and then using some fine solder I tack each of the uh, sides of the component manually. Using some extra flux will help here and is recommended. This method is fast when you have a small to medium sized board but becomes very difficult to do this reliably if you go below 0603 SMD packages. The pads will be too small and you will start to need magnification and uh, the soldering iron tip will have to be very thin as well. Method number two, using a stencil to apply solder paste to the PCB and then heating with uh, hot air to melt the solder. This method uh, requires ordering a stencil together with your PCBs. This is uh, how a frameless stencil looks like. Most uh, uh, prototyping friendly fab houses are now offering uh, very affordable stencils. This is something like $10. You will need to align the uh, stencil over the uh, PCB on a flat surface. Then using a, a squeegee and some solder paste, you have to scrape across the surface of the stencil to force the solder paste through the holes and the paste will end up precisely on each pad on your PCB. Next you will have to place the parts with the light pressure using a pair of tweezers just enough to make them stick to the solder paste. And the final part is to heat the solder paste up to melting temperature and I tend to use the hot air gun for this because it's uh, quick but you have to be very careful to have the air pressure low enough to avoid blowing away components. So that's where the uh, difficulty of this uh, method lies in. Uh, you can easily blow away components if the pressure of the air is too high. You also need to be careful if you have other components nearby that can melt like plastic connectors and also avoid heating electrolytic capacitors too much. SMD parts are usually designed to withstand reflow temperatures for a defined period of time uh, but you need to stay below uh, 230 degrees Celsius to avoid causing any damage in the case of uh, lead free paste. Another variation of this method is to use a hot skillet or nylon and uh, heat the PCB entirely from the bottom up. This will provide better results than the hot air gun because the heating will be happening uniformly across the entire surface of the board and there is no risk of uh, blowing the parts away or uh, there is also less risk of parts tombstoning. 
Using this method, I can easily solder O4, O2 components with uh, great solder joints. Method number three involves using the same steel stencil to dispense the solder paste on the PCB, but then reflowing the paste using a reflow oven. This is the best way to solder SMD parts because it provides an enclosed space where the temperature can be controlled very precisely. You can build your own reflow oven by repurposing an electric oven and making your own reflow oven controller. There are plenty of open source designs that you can use and they all use the same principle. A PID loop, a thermocouple for measuring temperature and a solid state relay for switching the oven on or off according to the program. Using such a setup you can follow a reflow profile which is usually given in the datasheet of the solder paste or the datasheet of the components used. This is the same process used in industrial PCB assembly. The only difference is that they have more complicated ovens with different zones and some are filled with specific gases instead of air to provide the best possible solder joint. I have built my own reflow oven 7 or 8 years ago and uh, I have used it successfully to assemble thousands of boards. However, in recent years I haven't used it because I only assemble one or two prototypes and I prefer to use method number one or number two because it's faster and more economical. Uh, because you can imagine heating up an 800 watt or 1000 watt electrical oven just for soldering a single PCB is not very economical. So I don't keep that reflow oven here in the lab anymore. And it was using a very old piece of um, uh, software and hardware as the controller. And uh, if I ever need it again, I will have to rebuild it. So I can't show it to you today, but I think you get the point. After uh, dispensing the paste and placing the parts, you just insert the PCB in the reflow oven. You start the program and uh, three minutes later, your PCB is uh, done. You can also buy ready-made reflow ovens from China. Those are decent from the reviews I've seen and there is even an alternative firmware for them that you can load. So if you're not on a tight budget, you can also buy one of those. It's not really needed for prototyping work. As you saw, you can get pretty good results with the hot iron or skillet, but certainly needed if you are assembling uh, more boards, especially if you plan to sell your boards. So there we go. These are the three methods I use to assemble SMD parts. If the board also contains through hole parts, I will solder those after I finished assembling the SMD parts. I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know what you think in the comment section and don't forget to hit the like button. See you soon.